o'clock. It's time for us to choose another question from the magic box. So, let's see what it is this week. Oh, come on, magic box. Yes, now. Okay. The question is, what should we do with the personal self and its desires and passions? I feel like, okay, I should overcome them, but then I ask, why should I avoid such passions? If I should free myself from them, then why in the first place am I in this world with these kinds of desires and passions? So, this is a very common not question so much as sentiment from mostly I go up well, I get this exclusively from younger men okay uh, dealing with their own sexuality and their own desires and passions etc um, first off let's look at who well not who but what part of your awareness is posing this question? It's obviously not that part of your awareness that is overcome with passion and desire. It's a separate part. This is your mental body, your mind, your awareness, looking at your personality, your astrophysical being. Okay, so passions and desires are astrophysical things. They are completely natural aspects of incarnation. They are part of that mechanism that binds the mind to physical matter. These feelings, these passions, the astral body is the sentient self, the self that feels and senses, okay? That's what passions are. They're all about feeling, right? They're very physical, but they're also very emotional. They're subconsciously driven subconsciously and unconsciously driven. They are not ordinarily conscious things. It's not a conscious choice. It can be, but ordinarily it is not. Okay? So these are part of the automatic functioning of our physical being. Every physical being experiences certain passions and desires. It's completely natural. It's not something that we overcome. It's not a negative thing in and of itself. Where it becomes negative is when a passion and a desire becomes an obsession right, to the exclusion of all else, then it becomes a negative thing. It also becomes a negative thing when we try to overcome it, because we can't overcome it. What we can do is learn how to live with it. That's what growing up is about, that's what maturity is, is we learn to live with our passions and our desires, right? So, the thing to do with the passions and desires is, number one, to experience them fully. Without shame, okay? With, I, I always like to say, well, who told you you have to overcome them? It's not an instinct that comes from within. It's an instinct or 
a reaction that is impressed upon us by our society that says you cannot have these passions and desires. And that's probably one of the most dysfunctional things about, uh, you know, uh, human society is a negation of natural passions and desires. These are healthy things. The most healthy people I know maintain their passions and their desires, but they never become obsessive. They, <clears throat> they're honored when they arise and they're let go of when it's time. See, we have a lot of choice in how we express and how we live with our passions and desires. They sort of creep up on us and overtake us. And then, once they're fulfilled in some way, they release us. And they're no longer passions and desires until the next time, right? It's a rhythmic thing. It's a rhythmic thing based a lot on physiology, our bodies, okay? And upon our emotional reality, right? So, uh, if we accept our passions and desires and do not let them become toxic through either overindulgence in them or negation of them, they become manageable things that we can negotiate our existence with. Right? <clears throat> now, as just naturally, as we get older, our relationship with our passions and desires changes. We become accustomed to them. Like all content of the subconsciousness, we cannot control when and how and where, etc., the subconscious will emerge. Okay? But we can control how we respond to that emergence and what we do with it once it has emerged. We don't have to... We don't have to be in that place of slavery to a passion or a desire. We can... We can limit our involvement in it. As long as we honor the fact that it has arisen, we can then take control of ourselves in response to its arisal. We don't have to be its slave. We can say, well, that's nice, and I let it go. Or we can say, oh, that's nice, and I dive right in. But we have a, we have choice. At that point, after the arisal of it, we have choice, okay? And with practice, we can be where we want to be in relationship to our passions and desires. As long as we don't try to negate them. This is different. I'm not talking about negating a passion or a desire. I'm talking about taking our power of choice at that point and determining where we will go with that passion or desire. It's really that simple. But key to that is to let go of shame, 
and guilt and all those things that we have learned from our society that tell us you must overcome these base desires and passions. Well, they're not base. They're human. <laughs> Plain and simple. Every human being in existence has the same passions and desires inside of them. It's really a matter of how well they camouflage, how well they hide them. In, in essence, how untruthful <clears throat> they are to themselves. Okay? So, I urge you not to be untruthful to yourselves, to your passions and desires, but simply come to a place in yourself and in what you decide to do with these passions and desires, come to a place of comfort and acceptance. Okay? So, good luck, you know, it's something that every human being faces. So you're not alone. <laughs> All right. So next time, we'll see what's up. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.